what anyone could say or do that would change how excited and out of shape I'm in for this event. Oh! It's very important that we immediately get something extremely freaking crystal clear. I love my Xbox. I adored my Xbox 360. I was never big on the original Xbox back in the day. And I still, right now, not only love my Xbox One X, but I am still somehow very excited for my Series X. I just, I love video games and video gaming in general. I love having all of the consoles, all of the systems that I never have to miss out on a single exclusive. I mean, Gears of War is one of my favorite friends franchises of all time and somehow even though it has five friggin installments in the series six if you want to count judgment but let's just forget about it it still seems to be a very underrated franchise that people oh just that forget about it and as I've said a billion times, the reason why I love my Xbox One so much isn't so much for the non-existent exclusives, but because it's just technically a more powerful machine than the Pro. I'm not big in the statistics and, and oh, who's got the best graphics? But when one does true 4K and I have a 4K TV, have I cleared up enough how much I love Microsoft? Do I need Phil Spencer to walk into this room so I can un- And I'm still excited for the new console. However, <laughs> that doesn't mean that I loved that event that Xbox just put on. In fact, as an Xbox fan, I was a little frustrated because I do feel like or everyone's eyes were zeroed in on Xbox in this moment because it was Xbox's chance to show the gaming world why their new console deserves to be purchased. Why should we go out and buy this system after the debacle that was Microsoft? during this entire generation and I just don't feel like they knocked it out of the park and, and really brought it home for anyone. They very much dropped the ball this entire generation and it didn't really seem like until the last couple of years they really even cared about fixing it. And so they sat there twiddling their thumbs for a few years, came up with Game Pass and then decided to purchase 15 game studios and start making games. Of course, because that was only a couple of years ago, none of those games were ready to come out on the Xbox One this generation, but you would think and we are now seeing that they are going to be ready and releasing on this new system. So it's almost like Xbox Xbox just took a generation off of making games and they're going into Series X full bore. But I really thought they would be able to put on a really cool show. Um, it just didn't really land. Uh, I want to go through as much of it as possible, but it was a long event. I've already blabbed for way too long at the start of this video with my thoughts and feelings. I just want to say I live streamed it on Twitch. Thank you if you were over there with me watching that. We had a great time following me on Twitch. And I, I, you can see I was clearly excited and amped up. I stayed positive right through to the end. And there was a really cool announcement right at the end that made my freaking year. Ah! And trust me, I needed something this year to make me happy. What the frick is happening this year? But we sat through that pre-show for an hour. And my gosh, was that pre-show amping me up because they were really releasing your world premiere trailers during the freaking pre-show and in my mind I was like well, this this show has to be amazing if you're leak if you're release if these didn't make the cut if friggin Dragon Quest 11 definitive edition if hello neighbor 2 if ninja if echo generation that game looked awesome if all of those didn't make the main show what did we have in store for the main show as it turns out, I preferred the pre-show. <laughs> Mostly because of Ninja. <laughs> the best thing from the pre-show was that uh, they told us that every game we were going to see today would be day one on Game Pass. Meaning, if you already have Game Pass, everything you saw in this event, you could essentially pick up for free. I mean, you're paying for it, but you're already paying for it anyway if you have Game Pass. Xbox, Microsoft, they are doing some cool things, and that's definitely one of the coolest announcements to know that all of this stuff's Game Pass day one. I like that. But just because it's kind of free doesn't mean it's for me or for any of us. They have to be good games. Because even for free, I'm not going to play them if they suck. So it begins. It starts with a little bit of, a, of an unknown game. You might not have heard of it. Uh, I think it's pronounced Harlow. 
It's a terrible joke. I quit. I retire. See ya. It started with Halo. They had this uh, little trailer of, of Master Chief being put together like Iron Man, and it was really hyping me up. I was so excited. And then the gameplay started, and I gotta say... <laughs> Immediately, I was I was impressed by the gameplay itself. Very fast pace, really cool. There's a freaking hook shot. I don't know when they added a hook shot to Halo, but it looks awesome. Also, there's like an overworld map now, so I guess it's an open world Halo. That's freaking cool. Some classic Halo, riding around in the Warthog. Beautiful. Gorgeous, classic Halo gameplay. Very exciting. Can't wait. Open world. Would you believe it? <laughs> Here's the kicker. It kind of looks awful, vi visually. Again, I'm not a graphics guy, but even in this demo, like right there as I was talking, when they flick back from the map, watch what happens when they flick back. Did you see that? Did you see that? It looked really ugly for a couple of seconds there. That's not really like SSD super fast rendering that we've been hearing about from both PlayStation 5 and Xbox. That's not really peak performance I'm seeing in this demo that you've chosen to show us. But anyway, I'm not going to judge just on that. The entire thing as a whole, I mean, people are sharing screenshots all over the place, just screenshots on their own. This image, which is an official screenshot for the game, which... It just looks bad. It, I, I'm trying, I am still excited for Halo. Just because the game doesn't look, mm, uh, eh, doesn't mean it's not going to be a fun, great game. Doesn't mean it's not a game that I'm not going to enjoy immensely. But to start the show with a next gen game and it looks like this, it's just, it is inherently underwhelming. We're looking for that next gen thing. I'm not seeing the SSD go to work. I'm not seeing visuals go to work. And they've come out and said since this that it was, and this, and it's not just me making this up because they said themselves to clarify and to try and justify this. It's of a very early build of the game. But that blows my mind because the game's out holiday season. The game's out this year. Why would you, what if, why would you not show a demo of the game that's a little closer to finished, a little bit where it's probably should be at by now, or at the very least, if this is all you have to show, maybe don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but maybe don't show a very early build of a game that's coming out soon because it misrepresents the game. Yeah, I mean, there's more I could pick apart. They did this whole uh, speaking dialogue part with this enemy right up in the camera's face, and it's just, it's not animated well. I mean, you compare it to even Hellblade 2, another Xbox game even. Let's, let's not even compare it to any PlayStation games. Compare it to the animations in Hellblade 2. It's... <laughs> One looks next gen, the other looks like a 360 game. <laughs> I was gonna throw in remastered, but I think I'll leave it where I put it. <laughs> and again, I'm still excited. I'm not trying to crap on it too much. I'm trying to have a goof and a gaff, but at the same time, like it does, it does look rough around the edges. I'm sure the game's gonna be fine. Be because we're talking about Xbox, uh, and I don't know anyone else who has an Xbox One, I don't know how many of you played the State of Decay games. The last one, which came out fairly recently, the last year or so, was actually pretty fun, albeit kind of buggy. Even though we didn't get any gameplay here, which is a trend we will see through the rest of this video, uh, I I'm still excited for the third game because it's a reliable studio when it's a decent franchise. Oh, I didn't even mention the worst part about Halo. <laughs> this is a preference thing. Some of you might not care, but they're turning it into a game as a service. So 343 said it's the last standalone Halo they're going to release for a long time. And they're just going to add content to this game. Essentially, it's going to get the Destiny 2 treatment, which... I don't love that. I would rather them just make a solid Halo game and just have it be a solid Halo game. But I guess now we know what they mean by Halo Infinite because it's infinitely never going to end. Look forward to Halo Infinite King Reborn on Xbox Series X2 in six years from now. Everwild is an extremely interesting case. If you know me, you can probably tell I love this art style. It's just right up my alley. I love it. I adore it. But where there was no gameplay and it turns out there wasn't just no gameplay in this trailer there there actually is no gameplay 
Um, this game is so early in development that Rare has said they're still messing around with ideas for the gameplay. Now, this is where we find our problem. You remember at the top of this video when I said Xbox recently bought like 15 studios and blah, 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 blah. It takes a long time to make a game. Some can get shoveled out in a year looking at you, Assassin's Creed and every Call of Duty. Some can get out in a couple of years, but more often than not, they take a few years. And we're not at that few year point yet. And who's to say which of these games started on the dot two years ago when Microsoft bought these studios? Because we hadn't seen anything from 15 studios, what do we usually get first? Cinematic trailers. Whenever a game is announced, you get a cinematic trailer. It's very rare you start with games. Gameplay. Then you get a gameplay after. So what we're seeing here is a bunch of games being announced. World premieres, as they like to remind you. But that means cinematic. You just don't jump straight to gameplay. It almost never happens. I actually really liked this next trailer. And I might even like the game. It's a cooperative multiplayer game where you play as like shrunken down kids having to fight Beatles. But they had a fun little joke about Cyberpunk 2077. They even had a Battletoads reference hidden in here. It's made by Obsidian too. And I honestly think this could be fun. I think this could be fun. It comes out pretty soon as well in a couple of weeks. Then we got an actual big Obsidian game called Avowed. I had trouble pronouncing that one because it's me. I still can't say Shin Megami Tensei. Did I do it? <laughs> I think I did it. This game takes place in a pre-existing universe of a series of games I, I don't remember, but a lot of people are really hyped for it. it. More than likely, this will turn out to be a really cool game, so I'm looking forward to this one. It's cool to know I don't have to pay for it, just in case I don't like it. I know nothing about a Dusk Falls. They showed us, I think, the game. I don't, I can't tell you. Uh, the only, the only extra tidbit, the only extra little snippet of news we got for Hellblade 2 is that the game is set in Iceland. That's all they said. This whole segment was just, it's in Iceland. Psychonauts 2, um, uh, I really like Double Fine. I never played the first Psychonauts though, but I love Jack Black, so there was a lot to love about this trailer. Oh, 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 get excited, ladies and gentlemen. What is a console, what is a system worth having if it doesn't have Destiny 2? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I think about selling my Switch on Craigslist just because, hey, it doesn't have Destiny 2, what's the point in having it? I don't know. I hope you Destiny 2 fans are happy. <laughs> I couldn't care less about that one. Uh, Stalker 2, again, no gameplay, but we saw some really cool imagery and visuals here and what they did show, and I am definitely intrigued in this one. Warhammer 40,000 Dark Souls had no gameplay. Can't tell you anything about it. Tetris Effect is Tetris. I mean, it's a great game. The Gunk had gameplay. It looks very similar to Savage Planet. Um, but I like Savage Planet, so hopefully that's a good thing. This right here. Oh, uh, I gotta tell you, I breathed a sigh of relief when I got to this one because I finally found something that can be my favorite from the event, something I was actually kind of excited for, and most of all, something that actually showed off what the next gen of systems are capable of. My gosh. I mean, PlayStation 5's event kicked it off right away with Ratchet and Clank, showing us them jumping through dimensions in an instant, like, bah, that SSD going to work. It took us 46 minutes to get to the medium, where we finally see something like that happening. Uh, the dual reality gameplay, two worlds rendered sim simultaneously. Like, that is crazy. Looks like you can flick between them, and in one of the realities, something creepy will be happening, and then you switch back. I don't, I don't know. I can't really, I can't really tell. I'm very, very intrigued. We're seeing a, p a powerful machine run a game that needs that power. So for me, this was the standout of the event, honestly, and I'd never heard of it before, so I'm excited. Speaking of Remedy, <laughs> I don't know. This, <laughs> I've got a lot of I don't knows. We did see little snippets of gameplay for Remedy's new game, Crossfire X. I don't, I don't, was there an original Crossfire? I'll give it a shot for Remedy, and I hope this one turns out nice. And then that was almost it. That was almost it. They gave us a montage of things we saw through the event, and then they did the old Nintendo fake out where they, they ended on something cool, a really cool announcement, and uh, it was really cool. Actually, I'll just, here's, here's how it went down. Here's one more thing. Fable, if I see Playground Games, I'm gonna lose my mind. <sighs> ah! Fable, Fable, Fable! Here it is. 
It's happening. We did it. Oh my gosh. Finally. It has happened to me right in front of my face, and I just cannot hide it. I am a huge Fable fan. I loved the original game, and unlike a lot of hardcore Fable fans, I actually preferred the second one. I really, really love the second Fable. Definitely one that I, I cherish, and that I think about often, and wish we could get a new one. Third one. Oh, no. <laughs> Third one ain't it. I am super excited for this. Really excited. We've been hearing rumors about Playground Games making a new Fable for what feels like a couple of years now. So I think this game might be further along than this little splash screen tells us. But I still don't expect to see it for a year or two. They're really gonna want to get this right. Playground Games up until now have only made Forza and that might scare a lot of you but they're actually a really good game dev they're a really reliable company they seem very passionate about making this fable game now that being said when you look back at just the list of things that we've seen <laughs> in retrospect you know let's forget we didn't see gameplay for a lot of things let's just go down the list of exclusives halo state of decay 3 a new forza i mean of course everwild couple of obsidian games and avowed could be really cool hellblade 2 a new fable game crossfire x even though we don't know a lot about these games even though a couple of them might not shake out to be the funnest things around town you can't deny that xbox and microsoft are making an effort here. You can't say that there isn't exclusives coming. You can't say that at least for the start of all of this, the Series X doesn't have exclusives. Whether or not those end up being good or bad is yet to be seen. But on the on the Xbox One, you can't even say that there's bad exclusive because there is none. There's none. <laughs> Weirdly, they said at the end of the event they're gonna do another one. They never they didn't. I really thought they were gonna give us a price and the date. Nope. <laughs> oh no, why? Why? Freaking why? They said they're gonna do another event soon, and we'll probably get it then. And you know what that means? If they have another event, they have to have at least a few more cool things. Out of their 15 studios, they showed us nine of the studios. So we still have to see half the studios, and I would like to think they'd have a couple more big surprises in store. Why not do just one event then? Why split it and do two average events? when you could just throw it all together and do one big event and give us a date. We're so close. We're so close. I had a lot of thoughts and feelings on this event. Um, that being said, it was better than EA Play. It was, oh, so much better than Ubisoft Forward. <laughs> Obviously, nothing could compete with PlayStation's event. It was better than the Nintendo Direct Mini, though. <laughs> all in all, I, I think it was a solid event. Uh, that fell shorter than it could have if they had waited. The biggest thing, okay, here's another way to look at it. As an already Xbox fan, someone who's already going to buy the Series X and whose mind isn't going to be changed on that, I can look at this, see the exclusives, know that I'm getting all of this essentially for free, see the cool things that are coming, and now I have something to be excited for. So for me, as a fan, it was good. And a lot of people that think this is good might be in the same boat. But if you're a PlayStation fan or a Nintendo fan, or you're just no, you're a no one fan and you're trying to figure out which one to get, I don't feel like this event gave anyone a reason to buy the Xbox, especially if they've seen the PlayStation event. This event just did not do it. It wasn't it. They didn't show up today. They haven't won anyone over. They've just given Xbox fans some stuff to look forward to. That's just the way I feel, but I think it's the way it is. I liked it, but it didn't sell the Series X. So let's hope whatever second event they have planned is just <laughs> amazing. What, one of these days I'm going to open that freaking... I still haven't opened this. I've had this for two weeks now. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I do a Q&A. Like, I don't know what video to do for it. Whatever. Uh, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye.